After more than a year of negotiation, we finally have a Hearst fix. So what can you tell us about it? Well, first of all, the Hearst water decision was uh, decided by the Supreme Court almost a year ago. And essentially, that Washington State Supreme Court case said that you cannot drill for a well without knowing if for sure there's water down there first. And that the counties have the responsibility for deciding that. So that really changed the water right law in the state of Washington. And that put a lot of pressure on the legislature to try to come up with a solution to that because the effect of that decision was to virtually stop all development, especially in our rural areas. And so we've had negotiators on both the Republican, the Democratic side, the Senate and the House uh, work hard on that for many months. Tough issue. Also, the Senate last year held up the capital budget till we had a Hearst water fix. So with a combination of those two subject matters, without either of them being fixed or being passed legislatively, it really damaged our state economically. It held up a lot of projects and a lot of development. And so in a summary, what this Hearst decision says is that by basin, it's divided up across the state, which is very wise because no, uh, the, the whole state, of course, is different with mountains and streams and valleys and so forth. So I'm from the 16th district, pretty simple the way it worked out, but there has already been in existence what they call the Walla Walla Management Partnership for about 10 years, and they've already come up with some rules. So those rules were left in effect. So we're used to that, and it means that the maximum amount of water for household use on a new house, say out in the country, is 1,250 gallons. But you could purchase water for outside use for a $2,000 one-time fee for 0.55 acre feet. So even though that sounds somewhat restrictive and may be costly, at least it allows you to get water and it sets some certainty for people. So that takes up much of Walla Walla County and much of Columbia County. Then there's some areas on the edges, you might say, that aren't within that basin that goes back to the old rule, which is 5,000 gallons per day. And so they could drill those wells without so much regulation. They could do what they could do under the, the old law. So that really helps break free the ability to, to drill wells. They have to comply with the rules, but it's doable. Once the Hearst solution passed, the legislature also approved the long-awaited capital construction budget and the bond bill needed to finance the projects. How did the 16th district fare? Well, we did, we did very well. That means that we were able to successfully fund some of our big projects, which were several, 10 or 12 of them. Uh, the larger ones was for the Pasco Early Learning Center, a million dollars for the Pasco School District. Uh, $900,000 for the College Place well, which is a pretty serious matter when you have a well go down for a municipality that size, so that was very helpful. There was money for our Giza Powerhouse Theater in Walla Walla, uh, $1.5 million for the Wooten Wildlife Area, $4.6 million for colleges in, in our district, and there's many others, and money left for schools, for building, and so forth. So. It was a good capital budget for us. The session is rapidly closing in on the halfway point, so how can citizens get involved at this point? Well, they certainly can always contact our office, contact me by email or by phone, and, and that's always uh, available. But also we're having a town hall telephone uh, call-in meeting on February 6th at 6 p.m. That's Tuesday, February 6th. And, and if people want to hear what's going on, we'd be happy to talk to them. But the number is 509-204-7030. And we sure invite you to join us.